Hey guys, Vladimir here. Now, I love sitting in my stoop in the evenings and playing my guitar, but I have a problem where I live, there's a bunch of mosquitoes that come out once the summer hits, and just stepping outside, I get eaten alive. So I was reading that there are a bunch of plants that are natural mosquito repellents, uh, such as lavender. So I went and bought some plants, and I was gonna buy some pots when I thought, you know what, I can easily 3D print my own. So, in fact, I went ahead and 3D printed a bunch of these um, and then just planted my own plants. So, now I'm actually going to show you how you can make your own. I designed this in Fusion 360 by drawing a sketch, revolving it, and then applying the shell feature. I printed two of these, one in vase mode with a thickness of just 0.4 millimeters and one with a thickness of 0.8 millimeters. As you can see, the one in vase mode at just 0.4 millimeter thick was pretty thin and fragile, so I decided to apply this Z-Poxy, two-part epoxy that I had for some added strength. This is the same stuff I used on my Viking helmet video I did a while back. It worked great before, so I decided to use it again. It basically involved just mixing equal parts from the bottles, giving it a good stir, and they do recommend spreading it out over aluminum foil before applying it. I simply applied this to the outside of the pot, but for extra strength, I could have gone ahead and also applied it to the inside. I let it dry for 24 hours before applying a coat of primer to it. On my right, I've got the pot that was printed in vase mode and then uh, applied with the two-part epoxy. The epoxy really gave it a nice sort of clear coating to it, uh, which uh, came out shiny and really looks good um, and definitely improved the strength. I mean, it's still a bit flexible, um, but I have a lot more confidence in it uh, actually holding together. Uh, on the left, I've got the one that I printed uh, using a 0.8 millimeter shell. So double the thickness and that, that 0.4 extra uh, millimeters in thickness really made a difference. Um, so this is definitely a lot stronger um, and I have no, no problem or no um, hesitation that this is actually going to hold up. Um, so this, this will be fine. Next, what I'm going to do is apply a coat of primer. And then I bought this a sandstone textured spray paint, uh, which I'm gonna apply to this to give it that uh, sandstone look. So, um, very curious to see how this turns out. I applied a coat of primer, and after letting it dry, I followed up with the textured spray paint. I applied three coats uh, spaced out several minutes apart. I will definitely be using this sandstone spray again. It applied a beautiful texture to this and really does make it look like it's made out of stone. This is going to be a hanging plant and there's multiple ways I can go about hanging it but because I wanted it to be supported from the bottom I designed and 3D printed this ring washer which I tied three pieces of twine to it and then cut another piece and tied it around the top of the pot. Next I went ahead and looped the three pieces of twine uh, through this other piece and this allows it to be supported from the bottom and the sides. Uh, finally, I simply just tied a knot uh, to the top of the three pieces of twine and it's ready to be hanged. The next step is to simply add the potting soil and the plant. In this case, you're seeing me plant my lavender. All that's left to do is just to go ahead and hang my flower pot. I'm very pleased with the way this came out and how simple it was to make. In fact, I went ahead and made one more where I planted some flowers. All right, now for those interested, I'll show you how I modeled this in Fusion 360. For our first flower pot, we'll start with just your classic uh, clay pot design. Uh, later, we'll go into some more complex and very neat designs that we can do. Um, but for now, we'll just keep it simple. Um, so we can go ahead and just start diving in with our sketch and create it. Um, sometimes I find it uh, easier to uh, grab an image um, and then just use that to kind of base your design off of just because sometimes you're not quite sure what the dimensions and the angles. Um, so to do that, I just go into Google and type uh, clay flower pot and grab an image that you like. So I think I grabbed this one, which I downloaded and saved it into my downloads folder. And then you can go to Fusion and just simply bring it in by going to uh, insert attach canvas 
um, select your plane. I'll do my ZX plane here, and then you can click on Select Image. I'm going to grab that image and bring the opacity down a bit and then click OK. Uh, and next, I'll go to a front view and calibrate this. So I know the distance I want it to be, so I'm going to go to Clay Flower Pot, right click, do Calibrate, and I'm going to set that distance um, to 170 millimeters. So I'll go with, uh, I'll click the two points that I want to distance, so that'll be the top and the bottom here. Make that 170, hit enter, double click on my scroll wheel, and that'll bring this back into view. Now I can go ahead and position this, so let's put it in our origin. So I'm going to right click and go to Edit Canvas, uh, grab it, and just kind of line up that center bottom uh, with our canvas there, or with our origin. Click OK, and then I'll untoggle origin. Uh, create a sketch here on the ZX plane and grab my line tool. So L4 line, and I'll start with the origin. I'm just going to go out straight and then come up at this angle here, come out a little bit, making this horizontal, and then coming up again at an angle. And so that's basically it. Uh, all I needed to um, use that canvas for is just to kind of get these angles in there. And so now I can get rid of it and I can finish this sketch uh, by coming here at our origin coming up. I can reference this point here and I'll get a blue dashed line across and then come back and close that out. So now I'll have a closed profile here. And if you want, you can come in and further tweak uh, or dial in your dimensions. So I'll hit D for dimensions. And this, for example, I wanted it to be 170. So I'll click that. Um, the bottom here, let's make that, let's try 50 millimeters. Um, so that looks good. You can see that brought this in quite a bit. We'll make this part here four millimeters. And if I want, I can also dimension this out. Notice that if I go out, I get this vertical dimension, but if I click when I'm close to that line, I get this sort of parallel dimension to it. So you can set it to whatever you want. Come out here, make that, let's say, 40 millimeters. And I can further tweak that angle if I want, but that looks good to me. So I'm going to click Stop Sketch, go to Create, choose Revolve, choose that profile. For my axis, I'm going to choose this horizontal line here, and there's my clay pot. So looks good I'm gonna put a fillet here so F for fillet and make this it's going to be 15 millimeter fillet and now I have a couple options here so if um, I want to print this you know to be hollow and have a certain thickness I can go to modify go down to shell uh, and then click on the top surface here and I have the option of choosing an inside or an outside or both as far as where I want that thickness to be so I'm gonna go on the outside and I can make this for example um, two millimeters of uh, thickness around and that's just a really quick easy way to shell this out and make it a, a pot um, but I'm gonna take a different approach with this um, whenever I can I try to print with the shell or I'm sorry with the vase mode um, if possible I'm um, not sure this is going to be strong enough um, when I print it with the vase mode, but there's only one way to find out. So to do that, I actually don't need to shell it. I'm going to print it as a solid because what the vase mode does is it's only going to print the outer perimeter. It'll do whatever your uh, nozzle thickness is. It's going to extrude that one time going all the way around. So. Um, what I can do is I don't need this shell here. I can take this timeline handle here and just drag it back and that'll sort of bring me back in time so that uh, I'm now seeing uh, before that feature. So a couple options here. I can try it with the shell feature. If it doesn't work, I can just come back to this design and say, you know what, just drag this back and then try it with this thickness. Um, but let's go ahead and just uh, print it in shell mode so uh, I'll simulate this with um, simplify 3d so I'll go to make 3d print select my object and click OK um, bring it into simplify 3d let me get rid of my last one here and then uh, under processes I'm just gonna want to make sure I go to layer select single outline corkscrew um, and then I have five layers as a bottom layer click OK and prepare to print it's going to tell me are you sure you want to be in shell mode i'm going to click yes 
and now I'll get to see the actual simulation just to make sure it works out. So I'm going to take this across and that looks good. So one part I'm actually concerned about is this part here just to make sure that um, I'm not seeing through these that there's no big gap so that the, the layer adhesion works out and that these actually stick together so that looks good the way it is so um, I can send this to the printer I thought it would be a good idea to put some uh, draining holes on the bottom here so let's go ahead and do that uh, it's quite simple to do I'm just gonna create a sketch on this bottom surface I create a circle here at the center give it a diameter of 10 millimeters I'm also gonna create another one just up here somewhere I'll make it that same diameter in go ahead and vertically constrain that to our center and then I'll just go ahead and create a circular pattern uh, of that circle so I'll choose this as a circle my center point will be the center here and three looks good I'm gonna click OK stop sketch and then I can just go back in and extrude these up so I'll select all of them and just go in um, distance I'll just choose all and click OK now I have some draining holes in the bottom of the pot. All right, let me know what you guys thought of this project. If you have any questions, leave it on the comments below. Uh, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to learn how to design for 3D printing with Fusion 360, uh, make sure to check out my design courses at desktopmakes.com.